It's widely acknowledged that music has power to affect our emotions and improve lives in many different ways. These days, that's being put to good effect through the work of music therapists, as Josie Darby's been finding out. Oh, I see you're all set up. <laughs> Hazel Child is a registered music therapist in Worthing. She plays improvised music to connect with people who have dementia or other physical and cognitive limitations. She's been telling me more about what music therapy is. It's a communication, particularly for people who aren't using language, either because they've never been able to use language or because they have a difficulty with it now. It's a way of allowing people to express how they feel and they, they know that I'm with them and that I care about what they have to say. There's a part of our brain that exists right from the very beginning that responds to music. As a Christian, Hazel, what part does faith play in what it is you do? Uh, it's a real source of strength and energy. And it runs through everything. Which one do you want? Hazel's base is the local Methodist church, where she offers music therapy for children like Samuel. It's a wonderful job. I'm very privileged. It's really lovely to be able to work in this way. It opens a window on people, um, and I get to see who they are. It's a conduit for their soul to shine through. For Samuel's mum, Penny, the music therapy is a lifeline. It's so important to him. He has such a passion for being involved with music and playing. He can't do what other children can do. He can't play on his own. So I, I love to see him happy and engaged. It's increased his confidence and it's, and it's increased his awareness of music. He enjoys being with, with Hazel. She's um, built up a really good rapport with Samuel. It's um, his real high point of the week. While Hazel never imposes her Christianity on others, there are moments when her faith and music making naturally come together. If you play Amazing Grace, everyone responds. Everyone. People who haven't responded to anything else, they will just sit a little bit straighter or their eyes will open a little bit or you can see their lips moving because they're singing it with me. And your faith is at the centre of what you do? It is, because I, I couldn't do it on my own. There has to be that greater power that I can lean on. We wish Hazel well with all her inspiring work. Now, it's believed that St Augustine said that when we sing, we pray twice. Music somehow makes it easier to express thankfulness for God's love, especially during Lent. Our next hymn certainly shows that and was written by Patrick Appleford, who died recently aged 93 and who made a huge contribution to church music.
As we know, Christian music making covers everything from ancient psalms to the most modern of songs. That of course includes gospel music and we're excited to launch our 2019 Gospel Choir of the Year competition. Entry is now open. All the details can be found on our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash songs of praise, along with the all important terms and conditions and privacy notice. The closing date is Sunday the 2nd of June. If you're a finalist, it's a great chance to showcase your choir. That's what happened with last year's winners, Shalom Karal, as their leader, Femi Ayodeji, explains. We applied for the BBC Gospel Choir of the Year last year and we won. Here's a trophy. So please apply now. This could be your year and this could be yours this year. So don't waste any time. Apply now. Brighton is very much a home for modern Christian music makers with a huge array of singers and bands recording their music here. One of the more established performers is Philippa Hanna, who now works with big names in the world of pop. But her early songs were often written in times of adversity. I started writing when I was about 13, but I hit a really rough spot. Probably when I was about 16, I just hit some major depression. And part of that was just struggling with my identity, confidence, and, you know, the music industry is not the easiest place for someone with confidence issues, you know? What changed? What changed is that I found my purpose within music. And that really came around the time that I found my Christian faith. So at 20, I met some Christians at an open mic night and they took me to a church service and just had this moment where I thought, if this is real, I need this. I need a do over. I need to start life over. So I sort of said this little quiet prayer during the music. And from that moment, everything began to change and I started to write songs about it. If I fall off the wagon, won't you put me right back on? Keep on driving, keep on driving. I found myself writing songs about my journey with self-esteem, my journey with depression and mental health issues. And suddenly it wasn't about being discovered anymore or being famous. It was about sharing a message and helping other people that were like me. This is a time of Lent, and Lent is when people reflect on difficult times. How have those difficult times shaped your journey yeah. and your faith? There have been so many times I've stood on stage and I've had to sing when I've been feeling really glum or I've been feeling challenged by going through a difficult time. And if you can encourage other people when you're feeling discouraged, that builds such an incredible spiritual strength in you. And the song you wrote, Everything is Possible, tell us about that. I really wanted to write a song which was helped us to look up from our circumstances. Um, and I think even just saying the words, everything is possible, it helps us to have hope in any situation, whether it's a, a health situation, a relationship situation, it could be a financial situation, whatever's going on, if you can say the words, everything is possible, that really helps to flick that switch of faith on. There's a story of unfailing love that echoes in my heart. There's a promise.
The season of Lent is a time for many Christians to take stock of life and find inspiration from the life of Christ, often in challenging circumstances. Organist and musician Simon Lowell can often be found conducting our Songs of Praise hymn recordings all over the UK. Well, I started my musical career as a chorister at St Paul's in London and that made a lasting impression on me. I knew that's what I wanted to do with my life and I've spent the last 40 years, I guess, as organist and director of music at various churches and cathedrals. But in May last year, Simon discovered he had cancer in his tongue and neck. It meant setting aside his first love of church music making. To receive news like that, completely out of the blue, because I felt absolutely fine, was a heck of a shock to me. I had to go through a number of months of daily radiotherapy treatment with some chemotherapy and when you're told that you've got cancer your immediate reaction is oh my gosh am I going to survive this or not and, and there are obviously dark moments, moments when you think you know for example if you're going through a scan or something like that you know are they going to find something else and am I going to make it through this um, but I think you just have to be, my take was I just had to be very positive about it and think yeah I'm, I'm going to get through this, I'm going to beat this. I suppose at the moment in Lent, it's an ideal time just to be quiet a bit and just to think of the good things that have come out of it as well as the pretty rotten things. I think my biggest salvation was, was really through music. So I just sort of, when I could, you know, sort of submerged myself in what I was doing um, and, and that helped me hugely. I think of some of the great composers who have been through the mill a little bit and they come out with these masterpieces but I find that reflective music certainly helps me. Simon's recent medical treatment has been successful. He's been able to return to work at his local church in Swanage in Dorset. Throughout the whole experience, which has been quite tough for me, I, I've never felt angry about it at all. I've never thought why me? It's just what it is and you know you you receive news like this and you just have to get on with it and deal with it and why me? Why not the next person? But it was me.